Hi and welcome back to another NERPG development live stream. In these videos I live stream the development of the NERPG engine, a 100% free and open source role playing game engine designed in Unity and written in C Sharp. These videos are unscripted and give you a chance to take a behind the scenes look at the unfiltered methodical side of software development. For more information on NERPG, be sure to check out nerpg.org where you can find documentation on the engine, links to the full source code at the official GitHub repository, and downloadable copies of NERPG Alpha, a free game designed to showcase the features of the NERPG engine. If you'd like to see more of this type of content in the future, be sure to like the videos, subscribe to the Cohesion YouTube channel, or just leave a message in the comments telling me what you'd like to see. In today's episode, we will be starting to create the prefabs and scriptable objects for the Unity package for NERPG. We've been starting to get some feedback on it, and at the Unity forums, there's some votes in here, and even an issue opened in the GitHub repository that we need a package. So, what we'll be doing is setting up NERPG so that we can export a nice, clean, packaged version of it. So to do that, we will need to make quite a few changes, probably, um, to our directory structure here. And I'll just sort of go through how this directory structure is set up right now and then what we need to do to get it to a place where we can export a minimal package here that will hopefully be self-contained enough for our needs. So we've got basically um, an NERPG subdirectory under the main directory structure here. And the reason for that is um, when you export things like especially as many packages or I mean import things like especially as many packages uh, as I've imported here some things um, really like to go in the root directory and I like to keep those things that pretty much have to live in the root directory separate from things that are actually part of the project or part of the engine um, Uma I think I found if I tried to put Uma anywhere other than the root directory um, bad things happened uh, I think the same actually for the sample scenes and standard assets folder. Um, I think I tried moving them into like a, you know, other content or something once and it, it just didn't work. Um, so uh, maybe I did something wrong or maybe some folders really just want to be in the root directory of the project. I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, under any RPG, we've got the engine and the engine is basically supposed to contain just everything needed for the engine and then we've got content directories and then unused external content is just stuff I'm evaluating um, and seeing if I want to keep it in the game or it might be something that I thought was really cool um, but I just uh, haven't got to the part of the game where I actually need to add it yet and used external content uh, up here is basically everything that I've imported and it's all um, separated into folders uh, very similar to what you'll see um, for the source folders on the NERPG sources page. So everything that I've used in here is uh, separated and I'm going through making a little more of a table here so that we can see uh, try to get some good license and author information on all the stuff. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I was making the game is uh, some sites are better at listing um, license information than others. So if you see, for example, on Sketchfab over here, um, it's got a great license and you can just click on that and it tells you what you can do. So this is fantastic because um, I can actually go in and I can look at the fishing rod and I can attach this license to it um, by giving attribution and having the product remain um, completely free. Um, it, it makes it really easy to be able to redistribute some of this stuff with the engine and, and give her like a really good uh, full engine. However, when you go to the asset store, unless I'm missing something here, 
um, whenever I click on any of the packages here, I'm, I'm trying to find license information. And you know, there's like no license file encoded anywhere in the package files, nothing here, nothing anywhere on this page really. Um, so if there is license information in the Unity packages somewhere and I'm just not aware of it, uh, that'd be awesome if you could just leave a note in the comments telling me where it is. Um, otherwise, uh, if you're watching this and you're one of the guys working on the Unity Asset Store, can you please add licensing as a requirement um, for putting your stuff on this, up on the store? Um, because when you've, when you've got this many assets um, that you're working with and trying to contact all of the authors individually and you know it's it's even more you know for me I've got literally hundreds almost a thousand now up in there so uh, having this kind of stuff available is really helpful anyway uh, back to the game here um, so that's why these are in external content directories just so that we can keep track of, uh, of the fact that this isn't content necessarily that we own um, so what we need to do basically is there's some stuff inside of the engine here that is uh, maybe doesn't need to be there. And what we need to do is basically create like an examples um, directory so that we can create some prefabs uh, so that we can export everything properly. So the way that an ERPG works is we load up the load game manager, which is a scene. Uh, it's actually the one that's open right now that contains our game manager prefab. And this scene then loads all of the other scenes. So if we're looking over here at, um, at the game manager, there is inside of it a level manager and this stuff right here tells you basically which scenes um, should be loaded here so the way that the first scene gets loaded is in the build settings and essentially whatever is scene zero in the build settings here it, when you press play that's the scene that uh, that will get loaded in the build um, otherwise, you know, if you're if, if you're in the editor here, it's just whatever scene you're actually in right now. So in the build, um, the load game manager will get initialized. It'll, it'll recognize that it is on the initialization scene, and from there, uh, it'll either go to the main menu or the character creator. Uh, no, never mind. I think yeah, it'll go to the main menu basically um, when you start the game from the main menu it will then either go to the character creator if you have the load character creator here um, this is so that um, you could create a game where you can actually customize your character before you go in you don't actually have to have like the character creator as an in-game option i just uh, wanted that because i didn't want to create a game where you have to force your people to pay for like um, appearance changes or anything like that from there, it, it'll either, once you pass out of the character creator, go into the default starting zone, or, yeah, uh, if you didn't have the character creator selected, then it would just pop you straight into the default starting zone. So, what we want to do is, for our demo version of this, um, we'll need to create a couple of scenes uh, so that we're not popping into the Soulforge here. And we actually have a couple of them already, um, but I think we need some new ones because what we want to do is we want to create a copy of the load game manager that has like, these values different. And that means that will want to be able to override what's in our current game manager either using a prefab variant or um, or just uh, setting the values in the scene uh, which is another way of overriding them because that's a scene specific override so I think um, the best thing to do here is just 
going to be duplicate the load game manager folder and I kind of think we need to rename these directories because basically yeah, the engine is just the engine, and so having the load game manager in there kind of makes sense because that's necessary basically for the engine to function. But we want to call this the example load game manager because that's the one that we're going to be working with here. So I think since the example scene is not part of the engine, basically it deserves its own subdirectory. and it deserves its own scenes directory. We're going to move the example load game manager into that scenes directory. And then we're going to rename that now the main menu is part of the engine so that stays there and if we basically if we create a build with this what we do is we just point it uh, to the example load game manager Combat test, it's not really part of the engine. That's a level that I created. Um, it's just got like constant units spawning in it. So um, we might actually even use the combat test as part of the example. In fact, I think, yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll move the combat test scene into there. Um, because basically what I want to do is we've got like this teleport or essentially like a load level ability. Uh, so I want uh, like a nice non-combat scene with interactables and then a combat scene where you can actually like test the combat features of the game, or I mean of the engine. Um, this all unit scene, that doesn't really belong in the engine, um, but it's not going in the examples either. The all unit scene basically um, it's a scene with actually you know what it might be fun just to load that up just so you can get maybe a little bit of a development preview here uh, so yeah why don't we do that just for fun this uh, might take a little while by the way Still loading? Yeah. This uh, this particular scene right here. Is very memory intensive because it has, I think, like well over a hundred units in it. There we go. Now it's loading. Okay. We can go into the scene view here and Oh yeah, 
yeah, that's going nice and slow. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, so, if you're wondering about things <laughs> that any RPG supports, this is a scene with like almost every free asset from the asset store in it. Um, and all of these guys are already like hooked up to the NERPG engine. And uh, if, if you want a good laugh, um, maybe I'll do it in one of my videos coming up here. Uh, I can just teleport or spawn my character into this level. Uh, and the game, like it almost freezes up completely. The frame rates drop to like, I don't even know, like one every five seconds or something like that, because you basically have like well over a hundred mobs just comes flying at your guy and attack him. Uh, so it's kind of a fun scene, um, but basically like all of this stuff, uh, I created animation profiles for all of them already and I'm ready to throw them into the, the game. Um, I just have to actually create the levels that they're part of. Um, and there's, you know, it's a really cool how many free assets you can get on the asset store here. You know, if you look at this, I've got all sorts of elementals, a bunch of humanoids, some like rock monsters, a whole pile of undead stuff, and then uh, like a bunch of dragons and some whole pile of like goblins. And then we've got, you know, a bunch of like animals and mosquitoes and plants and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really cool assets on the asset store here. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's not have that in the engine, um, because that's not ready yet, and it's just going to make the download, like, way bigger. Um, so, I think I'll just maybe create another subdirectory here, uh, and call it extras, because I thought it might be cool to produce a version of this download, um, like a, a development preview, where you could see or actually get to play with like literally all of the under development content. Uh, if you look uh, into the core here and go into the environments, every single thing that you see here in this subdirectory is a level that's actually already in the game, it's already got like a teleport crystal to it, um, just uh, disabled right now in the Soul Forge, uh, and these are all like fully explorable and have all the mobs pretty much that you see on this screen here in them. Um, so I thought that would be kind of cool uh, to do that at some point. So for now, uh, we're just going to create a folder and we'll go to scenes here. And we'll put the all units scene in with the extras. All right, there we go. That's good. Because when we build um, the engine, what happens is Unity is going to pull in like all of the dependencies for everything in the engine subdirectory. And if we have the extra scene in there, then it's going to pull in all of these things too. And our download is going to be much larger than it needs to be for just the. Um, the basic engine version that we're creating right now. Um, this character creator, oh, I don't know if I want to keep that in there or not. This is basically just the default Uma character creator. Uh, you can see here, I don't even know, do we have the 2D mode here? Yeah, nothing shows up in 2D mode. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, I just wasn't zoomed out far enough. So I just basically created the default Uma character or creator here. And if you hit create in code, then it's just gonna basically load the first scene. Um, I think we actually will keep that in as part of the engine. Um, it's not nearly as nice as the custom character creator that's in game, like like stylish, I mean, but it does have basically every single Uma option, uh, although it allows you to do some kind of cheap stuff like equip your Uma character with armor. It's not gonna give you stats, it's just visual. But um, yeah, we'll leave that in there. So I think now what we want to do is we want to go into the example load game manager and I just want to test something here. I haven't um, played around too much with this yet. Uh, we need a new scene actually. So let's see, what's a good scene? Uh, the combat test scene is actually a pretty good one to duplicate here. There isn't really much inside of it. So this will be our example scene, 
and we'll just call it the example default scene. Makes it pretty obvious to people what this thing is. I think that's just like mesh information. We'll recreate the uh, the nav mesh. It's just kind of odd having that named combat test in there. Um, we don't need the lighting in the load game manager either because uh, there are no characters in the load game manager. So if we go to the example default scene, uh, we should try to, basically we need to create uh, a bunch of prefabs. So we will need a prefabs folder. Um, the scripts folder is nice and self-contained. All of the core scripts for the, the engine are inside here. So we really don't need to do anything with that. Um, the resources, that's that's a good one. So what we need to do is we need to create scene nodes for every scene in the game. So some of these scene nodes don't belong in here anymore. Um, so we need to create a resources folder in the extras. create a scene node folder under that. And the reason that we are naming this resources, there's actually special meaning to this particular folder name to Unity. Um, all resources folders essentially are sort of like merged together at load time. Um, I might not be explaining that right, but that's basically the effect of it. And when you load things up um, using the resources command and I can just show you what that looks like here. Uh, there we go. This resources.load all. Um, this is automatically going to go ahead and search all folders with the name resources uh, capital R anywhere in your project basically. So by doing that, we're making these scene nodes available to that command there. So I'm going to take, um, let's see, all units, and we'll move that into the extras because we put that there. Um, the combat test goes in the example. So we'll put the combat, uh, just a second, do we have a example scenes and we need a resources folder as well. So we'll create a resources folder in our example folder and then we'll go into the resources folder and we will create a scene node folder and it's important that it's named exactly that um, because what happens is it's going to look for this subdirectory in the resources folder which is uh, base ability or in this case we're loading up scene nodes so in the scene node uh, resource manager that'll say scene node so now we've got a scene node folder in here so we can pull uh, out of the engine's scene node and put the combat test scene node into there. And we don't have, basically, we don't have a character creator scene node because um, 
we like we can't load the character creator basically it's like built into the engine you can't go back to it after you're in the game so basically we don't need one uh, right and the reason we've got a main menu scene node basically is uh, just so that we can um, play this music sample in the background so what we need to do now is create an example. Uh, just a second, do we have a load game manager scene node? We do. And so what we need to do is an example uh, load game manager scene node. And we'll pull that over under the examples into scene nodes and call it the example load game manager and then So we have that in the combat test now, uh, but we have one more scene here, and that's the example default scene. So we'll copy the combat test scene node here, and we'll call that example default scene. just not going to have any audio on default scene at all here. And then um, we should actually rename combat test. Uh, we'll call that example combat scene just to keep things consistent. Example combat scene, and we're just going to rename this combat test to example combat scene. And for now, I'm just going to set the music to none. Okay, that looks good. So now we have the three scenes, default scene, combat scene, load game manager, well, the example load game manager anyway, and then our three scene nodes, good. So now uh, we actually have, you know, scenes that we can load now. And uh, we don't need those anymore. And this looks good here. Um, the unarmed attacks profile, uh, that is going to stay with the engine um, because we need basically default, um, default unarmed attacks. And if we look at the prefabs folder, we've got a bunch of stuff in here. So let's just look at all this. So we have um, window frames here. And these window frames are all part of the default UI. So they're definitely like part of the engine. Uh, same with the contents. We've got all of these uh, panels here, which panels basically go inside of the window frames um, so that we can have sort of a modular window and content system, and those all need to stay there. We have the buttons that go on the windows, and those are all part of the UI. 
so they need to stay there. Um, same with the inventory. So the UI folder is good. Uh, this is all stuff that needs to stay inside of the engine. Um, so that's good. However, this bit right here, these interactables, um, this stuff, some of these I think have, yeah, some of these have spell effects on them. Um, so these ones actually are not actually part of the engine. Um, some of these are part of the alpha game. So we'll need to move uh, some of these out as well as basically make copies of them in our example directory. So our example directory will need a prefabs folder. And we can make a an interactables folder there. This teleporter here, um, that doesn't belong to the engine. Uh, let me just see. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, right. So this actually isn't even an actual teleporter. This is actually literally just the, the spell effect. Um, and originally, uh, let's see, originally I was creating the spell effects and pulling them into the engine just for testing, but that doesn't actually need to be in there. Uh, because if we look at this scene here, and there we go, uh, no, it's in 2D mode, there. Hmm. Interesting, it looks a little funny there. It's like uh, bent over, it's supposed to be standing up. Not sure why it's doing that exactly. Actually, I wonder if this thing's even in use. It may, like, I'm pretty sure it is. If we go, let's, uh, let's just go into the soul forge for a second here. Okay, now, in this mini temple, uh, this one has a bodymatic 2000, which has that in the RPG teleporter, which is working absolutely fine in the scene here. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. Huh. Uh, and is this actually the same asset? Yeah, that's that asset. Wow, I have no idea why um, when you get into its own scene here, it's flipped sideways like that. Uh, anyway, this um, is actually part of the game. So let's just see if we have a teleporter. We have three NERPG teleporters. Wow. Basically, the teleporter came from here. This is the original one. So, let's see what directory that one's in. Okay. So, it's in this 04FX prefab directory here. Um, so, what we actually want to do is move the 
any RPG teleporters into there um, because I've decided that I want to keep the the named versions of them with the originals so I can tell like what um, package they came from a lot easier rather than having to track that like in a spreadsheet or something. Oops, I'm just going to rename these uh, 1, 2, and 3. Because we're about to pull them all into the same directory. And I honestly have no idea why I have three of them. Uh, okay, number two is scaled down. Um, maybe in fact I will just indicate that, uh, any RPG teleporter can you put dots in these? 0 0.3 scale? yeah look you can put dots in it, great okay, hopefully that's okay um, the main teleporter is pretty tall uh, I think and so that's why I had it scaled down. I think the, the real teleporter is like four meters tall or something like that. Um, so now that we've got the teleporters out of there. All right, so all of these portal crystals here are part of the alpha game. So what we need to do is actually move those into the content directory because uh, all of these ones are not part of the engine. So in the content core prefabs we will create, we have an interactables directory, perfect. Um, we'll just create a portal subdirectory under it and basically everything that says portal crystal is one of those crystal graphics so those can all get moved over there Okay, um, and we have this NERPG character creator. Let's just take a look at that as well. Yeah, that is also one of those portal things. Um, so the NERPG character creator, um, we need to go back actually to that teleporter directory. Okay, that's where it is. So now we want the any RPG character creator and we'll drag that over there too um, because that is also a copy of that graphic. I will clean that up later uh, but for now we just need to get it out of um, out of the core directory here. So let's see what is this portal graphic prefab? Oh <laughs> this is an old one. Um, uh, right, that's the energy or any RPG blue energy belt. That's actually what we're using for our soul unit. Um, so I don't know if I'm actually using this particular prefab anywhere. Um, I can check in the game manager. And the player manager will tell us what we're using for that. Uh, we're using the default non-UMA player unit. And if we open up this prefab, we're using any RPG energy portal. OK. Uh, wait. Yes. That's the name of that unit right there. Uh, no? OK, good. So any RPG energy portal is over here in the floating orbs directories in core, which is where it should be. So let's go back here. Uh, 
portal graphic prefab. Okay, good. So that's not in use anywhere, and if it is, it's not important. Let me just make sure that it's not in use for the AI soul, because the AI souls were also um, were also using it. Uh, no, any RPG energy portal. Uh, how about the guardian of souls unit? Let's just make sure he's also using any RPG energy, energy portal. Good, so we're safe. So now let's take a look at this portal interactable prefab. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. So um, we can take this portal interactable prefab and move it over to the interactables directory uh, of the examples because nothing is referencing this particular one. Um, this was just one that I would stick the basically the graphics on, or I mean the uh, like the spell effects or whatever I decide to actually make the visual. So that's good. Um, we got that out of the engine directory now, and item pickups pig pickup node. Let me a uh, little piglet. Okay. So let's actually make a subdirectory for that portal and create another subdirectory item pickup. We'll need to actually put pig pickup, yeah, in the prefabs directory of the core here. So we'll create an item pickup subfolder there. And because that pig pickup is actually part of the game as well, We'll make a backup of it though, because it's got all the components we need on it to make our own more generic pickup. So we move that one over into the core and we pull this one out. Uh, not yet, not until we create an item pickup directory. Oh, there it is, okay, good. Okay, good. So now we can delete the item pickups directory from the engine. And we're just going to rename this to item pickup node. Uh, how about example item pickup node? Just to stay consistent. And this one can be the example portal interactable prefab. And this particular pickup node is going to have no trade skill prerequisites. And for now, I'm just going to take the item name out of there completely because I haven't created an example item to give it yet. And it will be called the example item pickup. We'll remove the spawn prefab for now because we haven't created that yet either. And glow material. That one actually belongs to the engine, so that's good. Um, yeah, we can leave that in the engine. Um, so now we have a bunch of basically gathering nodes. Now these ones, um, 
Okay, that's good. So the crafting node interactable prefab, that one can go in the examples as well. Um, so we will create a folder called crafting. And we'll put the crafting node interactable prefab in that. And under interactables, uh, in the core content, because uh, a bunch of this stuff is actually act part of the alpha game, we need to create some gathering subdirectory. So this birch tree logging node definitely needs to go in there. And this crystal mine portal needs to go in the portal subdirectory. The flax node is a gathering node. The mining node is a gathering node. And we need to create a crafting subdirectory as well. The most inscription table is a crafting subdirectory, or crafting item, I mean. The most cooking cauldron is also a crafting item. The teleport crystal mine portal is a portal. Mm, this glowing crystal. Oh, okay, so that's a quest giver. I guess that's probably the, yeah, we'll call that quest giver, I guess. Um, at that point, it actually, it, like, some of these things, it gets a little bit, um, less obvious because, for example, the Fountain of Time is both a quest giver and a cutscene interactable. Uh, so I guess we can just keep him in the base directory. We'll keep all the ones that are like dual purpose down here. But this glowing crystal is pretty much just a quest giver. So we'll put him up there. I think the fountain, this is just like a prefab. So I think um, what we want to do is we actually want to move, rename this to like any RPG uh, fountain. Yeah, and then, so the Fountain of Time interactable uh, can stay down here because he's a meta basically. He's got more than one thing. But the fountain itself should be renamed uh, to any RPG fountain of time model, just to keep consistent. We like to name things models if they are literally just a model. And if we look um, for the original one here, here it is in... Ah, Unused external content. Gonna have to move that. So what we want to do is pull our any RPG fountain into this directory here. Yeah, that's fine for now because I need to, uh, I'll search through that later uh, and 
credit the author before I pull that up into the use content directory. So then um, we can go back to the uh, to the prefabs here. And we've got this fishing white mullet node that can be moved up to the gathering. The herbalism brown mushroom node also goes up to gathering. The herbalism marsh reed node goes up to gab gathering. So this is a, let's see, uh, one item none. Okay, so this is a, a more generic prefab. Uh, so let's see, we'll move the spotted mushroom node because that's actually part of the game here. So that can go up to gathering as well. Um, but this herbalism node isn't actually used for anything. I don't think, yeah, there's no graphics attached to it. It doesn't have a loot table. Um, it's got herbalism, which is technically part of the game, um, but it's close enough to generic that I'm just going to pull it into here. And we'll just rename it to something a little more generic. So this is um, gathering. And let's pull it into the gathering directory here. And we're just going to call it actually like um, gathering node. About example gathering node interactable. One, because I want to have two different types of gathering nodes just so that it's uh, a good example of needing different types of gathering skills. Uh, you know, or I could even do three, doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see, this logging node here, um, it does have a loot table. It's got the birch tree. Um, I don't think I'm actually using it though, because in game, I actually have the birch tree logging node, I think. Um, let me just confirm that. We're just going to go into Birch Grove here. And we're just going to take a look at our gathering nodes and our logging nodes. And this is a Birch Tree logging node. And if I go select this, it's the Birch Tree logging node. These are all the Birch Tree logging node. Okay, perfect. So this one uh, is not actually in use, even though it's using uh, the birch tree model as its default spawn, spawn prefab. Uh, we were just using it basically as a template. So we can actually just copy that over into the gathering thing here. And I'm just going to null out its spawn prefab for now. I'm going to set its loot table to nothing as well. And set its ability to nothing. And whoops, this is supposed to be in the gathering directory here. Okay, so this is going to be example, example gathering node interactable to. And I'll make some prefabs for that as well. So then the last thing we have is the mining node prefab. Uh, and this one drops moonstones, which are not something that we're using. So this one is also basically unused. Uh, moonstones were like in my very first iteration of the game, uh, and I took them out and replaced them with blue shiny gems. So this one can also go in the gathering, and this will be like gathering 
node three Okay, good. So that gets rid of all the those prefabs. Um, let's see the character creator interactable prefab. It does use the any RPG teleporter, um, but it itself is actually like its own independent prefab. So it needs to go into its own subdirectory of type character creator because you never know we could have character creators with different things other than those really cool blue spinning gears on them. So we'll move that up into there because as that is also part of the game, not part of the engine. So now our engine is 100% clear of interactable prefabs, uh, which is good because it's only got the stuff that's actually part of the engine in it. Um, this path debugger I'm just going to leave in there. Uh, this was for basically debugging nav mesh uh, agent paths. Um, and all you have to do is like stick this prefab on your nav mesh agent, it's going to draw pink lines to wherever it's heading. So it's kind of cool if you're working with nav mesh, mesh agents and having trouble understanding their behavior because um, it just visually shows you stuff. The game manager and the event system definitely need to live in there. The game manager is basically the core of the NERPG engine and includes the player manager the inventory manager, the level manager, the keybind manager, the input manager, the save manager, the quest log, the cast targeting manager, the game manager, event manager, and configuration manager. And then we have all of our resource managers here, um, which are basically the factories that we use for um, the factories that we use uh, for all of our scriptable objects, uh, and then our UI managers here with our action bar manager, combat text, message feed, pop-up window, system window manager, nameplate manager, uh, and then we have our uh, character. Now those are all the scripts up there, everything else down here isn't scripts, um, they hold more like other different objects, so our character creator is actually this little box way down here at like minus 200. And when we're looking at the character preview, uh, our character actually spawns inside of here. So we just have like this big black box. Um, what are the dimensions here? Like 40 by 40 basically. And that gives us uh, like 20, 20 meters on either side of him to zoom the camera around him. So that's why uh, our character preview guy always ends up on a black background. Uh, we also have, yeah, and you can even see I have like a default character preview unit in there just for testing, uh, except for, right, of course, this guy, uh, he's Uma, so you're not actually going to see anything. Then we have the audio manager, um, which has the different uh, sources, and I'm probably going to add more of these in the future because I want um, to be able to cue like multiple sound effects at a time and stop them rather than just playing them one shot. And right now I only have three channels, so I can't really do that very well. Um, we've got the camera manager, and this has all of our cameras inside of it. Uh, the main camera is the one that follows our character around, and the character portrait and focus portrait cameras are the cameras that sit in front of whoever is targeted for this character and focus portrait. The minimap camera is the camera that's basically right over top of your character's head looking straight down on him and projecting to there. And then the main map camera is the camera that is basically looking down on the entire level 
and giving you that top-down view when you open the main map. Uh, and then the character preview camera is the camera that's way down here looking at your character preview unit. So that's all the cameras that we have in our game manager. Um, and then these player connections and player units uh, are just basically so that you can um, have a place to spawn your player connections and player units and not just have them pop up under the base here. It just keeps it a little more organized. Uh, and then of course UMA is required because the game is basically built around UMA. Uh, and then we just have this casting projector here, which is when you do ground targeted spells, um, it just basically like shines a light on the ground um, to make that sort of circle. And then the UI contains every single window and element of our UI system and there are quite a few of them here. Um, let's see, basically yeah, there's all of our static player interface elements, our pop-up windows, our system menus, uh, information display elements, lots of stuff there. So. Uh, that's the game manager, and that is the core of the game. Basically, like as long as you have this thing pulled into that load game scene, um, there's very little else that you actually need to get this thing to run. I mean, you can start a game theoretically, you know, literally with like no trade skills, nothing like that. Um, characters. Now these we might have to deal with. Uh, we have a unit spawn prefab here, which, okay, that's good. Um, the unit spawner is not an interactable, so he actually kind of deserves his own prefab, or his own directory. Um, so, put unit spawner and We'll just pull him down here, and he doesn't need to be the part of the engine anymore either. Let's see, for our players, um, player connection, that can stay, that's part of the engine. Player unit, um, I don't even think we're using this one, to be honest. No, we are totally not. Um, this guy is not in use anywhere, because basically, if you look in our game manager, and I'm just going to go jump back to the load game manager so we can see that. Um, if we go into the player manager and we look, we have default non-UMA player unit and default UMA player unit. Those are the only player units we're referring to. So this player unit here, you can actually see the default UMA player unit has um, a bunch more stuff on it. Apparently a currency manager. Uh, that's kind of interesting because I thought the, yeah, the currency manager is supposed to go on the player connection. Uh, not sure why that was on the player unit. Uh, or I'm the default UMA player unit. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can see here we've got player unit, event receiver, interactable, animator, movement controller. This is missing a bunch of that stuff. So we're just going to delete that because we don't actually use that one. Um, so the default player unit, that's good. Um, the character preview unit. We don't use this one anymore either. This was a testing UMA 
character preview unit. And now what we do is in our character preview panel, we always just clone our character. So we don't actually have like a separate player preview unit. Um, so that one can go away as well. Actually, you know what? If I go into the game manager here and I look at the character creator, I think, <laughs> yeah, this is like a, Oh, uh, this was an unwrapped version of it. Okay, so we're not referring to like a non-existent um, preview unit. So, okay, that's good. The default non-UMA player unit. If I open this thing up, it's using the NERPG energy portal. Um, that basically means that it's really not part of the engine. Um, this is actually part of the game. So what we need to do is we need to go into prefabs and we have a character directory there that's good um, we're gonna create a player subdirectory and we're gonna move the default non uma player unit into there, but not actually before copying it. I'm just going to remove the graphic from him and call him like example non uma non animated player unit. Um, and non non animated is is important. It's not a humanoid model. Um, so basically, this could literally just be like a box or like a actually. I, I think I'm just going to make him a capsule. So we can move actually the example unit um, down into our example prefabs directory. So we will create character. create a subdirectory called player. Now default non UMA player unit goes down into the player. Oops. Uh, nope. Let's can I undo that if I hit control Z? Uh, nope. I guess control Z will not unmove things. So let's uh, default non UMA player unit. That right, that belongs with the core content here because that's part of the game. And the example non UMA non animated player unit is the one that we go down here to. Um, you can have player units that are animated and have bone structures or that don't and the game is just fine either way if it doesn't have a character animator uh, It'll just basically push it around like a capsule or a box. So that's good. These are really the only two things that need to be part of the engine. Um, basically the UMA player unit and the player connection, um, which is what holds all the stuff that needs to exist when we despawn the player unit in between scenes or in the case of alpha um, when switching from the default like lost soul unit to the player unit we don't want the player to lose all their stats so now we have let's see a bunch more things here we have an uma ai unit um, that's good. So that one uh, basically can stay in the engine directory. Hmm, you know what? No. We might actually even put that into the examples directory. I'm just going to think about that for a minute here. Um, the Guardian of Souls unit most definitely is part of the game, so we need to create an AI folder here, and these guys are actually all AIs, so they can get moved into there, and then 
our guardian of souls goes up into the game content directory AI vendor that's nice um, yeah okay since technically you don't actually need any specific AI units for the engine to run we can pretty much I think move all these guys uh, except for AI soul AI soul is actually he's part of the game too so he can go up there aggro range needs to stay here aggro range is basically just like a sphere um, and this is how our enemies aggro um, this sphere is a trigger and whenever anything enters this trigger um, we've got a function here like on trigger enter and uh, there we go on trigger enter and then that's what causes the AI to actually aggro the player so that uh, definitely is part of the engine so that can stay let's see AI quest giver um, that's more like an example unit I'm interested to see though is he an Uma yeah looks like it uh, just a second do we have the dynamic character yeah that there, there it is okay perfect so AI quest giver um, can go down into the examples folder same with AI skill trainer he can go down also into the AI folder in the examples We have a non UMA AI unit. Okay. This guy is also an example. Um, this is actually the base for an AI unit. We have to actually put a character model into this thing for it to work, um, but it is kind of an example in a way I think I'll put like a box on top of him or a capsule or something like that um, just for demonstration purposes same deal uh, non Uma quest giver now okay this guy this guy over here is actually using uh, the night model um, I'm gonna change that up I'm probably gonna replace this guy with a capsule as well and we have the AI vendor. I think he's also Uma. He's got a whole pile of items on him. We're going to have to change that. Um, but we can move him over to the AI units as well. We have an Uma AI unit and an Uma AI skill trainer. Those guys can all be moved over to the examples folder. AI soul tester I honestly don't recall what this guy was for so I'm just gonna go into the soul forge and just confirm that I'm not using that guy uh, so I can delete him hopefully So if we look at the Guardian of Souls, the Guardian of Souls is this unit right here. So that's good. We're not using AI Soul Tester there. We have two AI Soul spawners here. Um, one guy is spawning AI Soul. Other guy also spawning AI Soul. Good. So whatever that AI Soul Tester is, it was just a tester that I was temporarily using. Uh, there, which means he is not needed. 
Okay, good. So basically, um, the only things left in the engine's character prefab directory are the ego range, uh, which is a component that's needed for everything, which is why it's not in the examples. Well, I mean, at least for anything that needs to aggro other things. And the basically the UMA player unit and the player connection. Everything else we can put in the examples folder. Um, because this is basically the bare minimum required for the engine to run. And we've got a bunch of prefabs here. Uh, not sure why I have a main camera one. I don't... Hmm. You know what? Why don't I... I'm just going to go into my load game manager. And I just want to make sure that I'm not actually using that main camera one, because if I'm not, I'm just going to get rid of it. It might have just been an accidental copy one day. So if I select main camera, I get main camera. Hmm. If I select minimap, I get that. If I select main map, I get that. So I have my character portrait and my focus portrait cameras here, uh, which I don't even think I have prefabs for. They just exist as part of the game manager. Character preview camera. Um, this one has no target texture. And this one, well, this one doesn't have a target texture either. I don't think I'm using this one anywhere. I am just going to delete it, basically. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't wreck anything. Uh, otherwise, if it does, well, that's my fault for having such a terrible name on that thing and not, <laughs> not naming it what it is actually supposed to be. So that covers off uh, the prefabs that are in the engine. Um, oh, it looks like we actually missed a couple. Um, focus unit frame is UI, so that actually belongs down there in the UI folder. Right, default spawn location. Default spawn location is a hidden object that we move into any scene. Um, like basically, I'll show you. I'll show you what it's for here. Um, so if we look at our scene nodes, uh, let's just go into those here. Um, you can see in our scene node we have a default spawn position, but that actually requires us like copying and pasting values in here. So it's a little bit easier. Um, to just drop a prefab into the scene that has a tag on it. So that's exactly what this is. Um, this thing is actually tagged default spawn location. And if the level manager finds this in a scene, um, then it'll just basically grab its position and set the character's position to that. So this actually should be part of the engine, um, but it belongs over here in the helper folder because uh, it's, it's pretty much kind of a helper. Um, in the same way that the path debugger is. Uh, so then we have lightning ball here. Um, basically, this is a spell prefab. Um, this is not part of the engine. It's just a particle system. It's got no components on it. Uh, but for all I know, mm, for all I know, we could be referencing it somewhere. It might actually be part of like uh, the lightning shield or like one of the AOE tethers. But it's definitely, definitely part of the the game. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find. Uh, interesting here. We've got two copies of it. What do you know? Um, hmm. 
particles floating orbs and then prefabs engine. So why don't we rename that to lightning ball two? We will go into this folder. We will search for lightning ball. We will move lightning ball two into that folder. And now we have lightning ball and lightning ball two in there. I'm not sure whether this one's actually in use or not. What would be really cool is if you could do like find all references. Um, I don't know if select dependencies. Uh, hmm. I don't know if that works exactly the way that I'm thinking it might. Um, Either way, let's go back into our prefabs here. Casting projector is definitely part of the engine. Um, it is kind of its own thing. It's not really a UI helper. It's not part of the game manager, or is it? Yeah, you know what, actually it is. It is part of the game manager because if you look in the game manager, there it is, casting projector. So I guess we can move it into the game manager folder. I mean. Technically, the UI is part of the game manager, too. Um, as are the cameras. Well, I'll think about that and decide whether I want to move the cameras in the UI underneath the game manager folder at some point in the future. Um, for now, though, Let's see, uh, the engine has been stripped down to its most bare components. These materials and stuff are all needed in here, basically. I'm really not sure what the skeleton body is doing in there. Um, hmm. Well, that I think actually gets automatically created. Um, let's see, characters, I think I have like an undead, yeah. We get these materials auto-created as part of our skeleton imports. Um, I, I'm kind of hesitant, you know what? Kind of hesitant to delete that one, but at the same time, let's just see. Uh, select dependencies. Is there anything using it? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, um, so I guess um, skeleton body, I'm just going to delete that, and honestly, because that's like, I think, an auto-created material. So then, uh, materials looks good, basically. We've got this sort of basic color here. Uh, I can't remember where we're using that, but that's okay. Then we have these icons here. And the icons, they're, I'd actually kind of like to put these back to the directories where they came from. Um, to do that, let's first rename them to let us know that we are in fact using these. Shape ones uh, come from a directory. Let's see, shape 03. Oh, you know what? I may have only imported just these three because these actually come from a much larger set. Um, 
which I think I specifically didn't import. Uh, so I guess uh, we'll actually, we'll just leave those there for now um, until I can figure out what I did with those. Uh, let's see, if I look at used external content and I look at icons, um, yeah, I don't remember exactly what set that came from. I will have to look that up. Uh, our default backpack, though, is that there was something called like 05, I think, was the name of the original picture for that. I don't see the original 05 picture, though. So, um, what's the easiest way to do this here? It was one of these, like, free RPG. Uh, no, no, okay, so 5 was the metal bar. Um, I might have actually pulled it right out of the directory. I guess for now, I'm just going to leave those there until I can actually figure out, because it's only like four images. Um, I don't remember exactly which sets those came from, uh, but I will look that up there. So icons directory is fine, I guess. Um, audio. These UI sounds come from the modern 3D menu. Yeah, this is the uh, the four sounds here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move those back um, to the modern 3D menu folder just so we remember actually that that's where they come from. And then the only thing left in the audio folder is the main mixer, which is good because that's um, that's part of the engine itself. And then we have animations. Um, these ones, like half of these animations I custom made, and the rest of them come from a couple of sets, um, but basically they're all sort of necessary for the engine. Um, I don't want to go through right now and separate these or try to find the original directories where they came from. Um, in the future I will do that uh, if I can, but for now um, I think I'm just going to leave those animations in there because basically this is the full animation set of unarmed casting and unarmed attacks that I have in the alpha game. And I kind of want the engine to come with at least like some basic unarmed casting uh, casting motions and fighting motions so that we can have the example combat scene because it would be kind of hard to have combat, uh, or it wouldn't look very good without uh, actual combat animations. Uh, this character material here, honestly, I don't think that's in use. I think this was just um, a testing thing that I was doing uh, in order to try to stop my character from sliding down hills. So let me just go look at that and just confirm that my player character here... I think it's... Uh, uh, where is that again? I think um, capsule collider? Yeah, material. This is where the physics material would have gone. And I'm totally not using that. So we'll just delete that because it's unused. No point in it remaining around. Okay, awesome. Um, so the engine now 
contains just the engine stuff. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create example prefabs and scriptable objects for our example scene. Um, first though, I'm actually curious just to see if we can get our example load game manager to load us directly into this default scene. Um, so let's actually open up this default scene because this was a, basically a copy of the combat test scene. And uh, we'll just delete that, delete that. Uh, get rid of all these units. Honestly, don't even know what that is. Um, environment is okay. Uh, this is a quad. It gets to be navigation static on the walkable layer. And all we have to do here, uh, where's my bake option? Bake. There it is. Bake. Okay. And just going to hit F to focus on it. Good. Okay. So this is our level right here. Um, interesting. Which looks like it's flipped upside down um, because Z is down. Hmm. Okay. Right. Quads. Yeah, now I remember. Um, quads actually start up and down. They don't start horizontal, uh, which is why, <laughs> of course, it set is down. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, that actually makes sense. And we don't really need any enemies in this scene. Uh, this is just a default scene. So let's save that. And this is going to be our default scene for our character. Okay, so we can go into our example load game manager here. should need to do we don't have a default non uma player unit we only have a default uma player unit we have the default player connection we will set the default player name to just player name. We're not going to have a default faction. Okay, so our default starting zone for the example load game manager is our example default scene. The main menu is the main menu. The load game manager is the load game manager. And the character creator is the character creator. That looks okay. I'm going to upgrade this tag because uh, we're actually going to be releasing version 0 0.6. Uh, so they, these changes are part of the changes that will be included with version 0 0.6 of the game engine. Uh, that one I'm actually going to apply directly to the game manager for now. Uh, hmm, okay, 
so in the example game manager, yeah, I've got a whole pile of this stuff here. Like realistically, um, I need to do something about these images, but I think I'm honestly, I'm just going to leave them all in here for now. So I'm just going to save that scene because realistically the only thing that we're trying to test right now is um, can we load ourselves into the example game manager scene, uh, whoops, the example default scene, I mean by loading up the example game manager. Because if we can, like we can actually almost, uh, we can get ready to basically uh, start creating all the we're putting all the prefabs into the example scene so that we can export our Unity package. So let's um, let's see. I think I think we're okay to to try to load that. Uh, what we actually do need to do though is we need to actually add these to the build settings. So if I add the open scene. I can just drag that up. I'm going to put it in the second slot here. Uh, we like if we do. Uh, I'm not going to do a build with it, but you would want it in the first slot if you were doing a build with it. Then we should load up the example default scene. Add that one. And we'll load up the example combat scene. And we'll add that one. Did I do add open scenes to the example combat scene? Hmm. Oh, there. Uh, oh, I see what happened here. Um, right, because I renamed that and it was already in the build, basically. So that's why it's up there. OK, good. So then we can go back to the example load game manager here and just save everything, load into the example load game manager, just make sure that we're still going to be by default loading the example default scene and not the character creator. So let's try that. Oh, whoops, you know what? Uh, there's a checkbox I need to uncheck here. And actually it looks like we have, yeah, that's <laughs> that checkbox is exactly why, uh, yeah, please set it in the inspector, of course. Uh, so we're going to uncheck that and then it won't try to load that. Um, that's good. That's a good warning. We actually put that in our code ourselves. Literally, it's a debug.log error that reminds us, hey, you need a, a player prefab but we're going to be using the default one, so let's try that. Uh, we're just going to hit save, or I mean we're going to be using the default UMA, not the default non-UMA. Play. Okay, and nothing is happening. Let's 
so we're still in the example load game. Oh, no wonder. Uh, right, of course. Um, it didn't detect that it was in the initialization scene. Uh, that's actually kind of important. So we have the example load game manager as the initialization scene. So we're going to save that. And then once it detects that it is in the initialization scene, then it will go on uh, and load the other scenes. Hopefully. Much better. OK, good. So um, I'm going to hit play. Still got all the games. Um, we can actually load these. In fact, if we tried to load these right now, we'd... Uh, no, actually, no, those would work just fine. Uh, but what we're testing now is that the new game starts... Uh, OK. Uh, example default scene couldn't be loaded because it hadn't been added to the build settings. Well, that's odd because I thought I actually went in and did add it to the build settings. Um, in fact, there it is right there. Example default scene in the build settings. Maybe it actually has to have a checkbox beside it. That would be neat. I thought that that checkbox honestly was only required um, for the actual build, not like for the editor running, but it's possible it may be required for the editor running. So back to the example load game manager. Let's try it again and see if that made a difference. Uh, whoops. We want a new game. Okay, good. Uh, we forgot to bake the lighting, but we are here with a player uh, in the scene. Awesome. So let's undo that. And uh, let's go into our example default scene. And I have an area light here. Uh, I just think I just need to generate lighting. Wow, crazy. Uh, this example default scene is literally just like a single quad, and it wants to spend eight minutes to bake the lighting. I wonder, like, is that because I check real time? I'm not really sure. Um, not afraid to admit that lighting is not my area of expertise. So this is one of those things that I need to learn a lot more about. Um, basically how Unity manages this stuff. Because like I've hit bake lighting on levels before and the baking it's like instantaneous. Hmm, you know what I'm going to do, I think? Let's see here. Uh, if I just cancel this and I undo real time, and then I hit generate lighting. Uh, no, okay. What if I only allow real time and undo baked and hit generate lighting? Let's see what happens then. Looks like it's going a little faster. 
I think it'll be okay since we actually do have like an area light in there. Uh, so we'll see. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like we're good there. So let's go back into the example load game manager. Mm, yes, we definitely want to save our example default scene because we just baked a bunch of lighting into it. And now I think we can go back into the load game manager. I think we can hit play and just go to a new game and end up in our example scene. So let's try that. Um, play, load, yeah, nope, new game. That's what we want. Okay, awesome. That's a lot better. So we have a player. Our player's got his player name. He is the absolute default UMA unit. Uh, he's got animations. He's got an animation controller. Uh, <laughs> the legs are a little bit wacky. Um, this is due to blend trees, I think, basically. Um, if there's like any, if there's any non sideways like motion, blend tree I think is trying to blend together two animations uh, and it's clearly getting them wrong. You can see like on our backup it looks like everything's okay. Uh, if we hit slash and go in a walk you can see basically like there's no uh, well very minimal foot skating here. Um, same with when we go forward I mean there's like a tiny little bit but like almost not visible for the foot skating um, but <laughs> let's see, uh, it, you know, it's interesting because it works okay when we walk. So this might actually just be like an issue with the controller. Uh, yeah, this right here, um, the animation I think is okay. This is Unity trying to do some weird blend tree stuff, which makes it look a little off. Uh, okay, cool. So turn walk to false and so this is actually pretty good um, we have a very nice minimal example default scene here and we can open up our main menu we can oh hey look actually uh, interestingly enough well, we have speed of the wolf but it's not on our bars. That is so odd. I don't know why Speed of the Wolf wasn't on our bars by default. <laughs> Look at him go. Okay. And let's just see, make sure everything else works. Uh, we have no gear, so that's okay. We have no reputations, that's fine. We've got no achievements, no skills, no currency, no quests, and there's our big old top-down map of the level. So that's, uh, that's pretty good, actually. Um, like, I think at this point, if I were to attempt to export just the engine and example directories, I may actually end up with a like a working sort of minimal Unity package, basically like no spells or anything like that. Um, let's see what we have in our resources here. There's no ability effects, no animation profiles, no weapons, um, no spells at all. No professions, no currencies, no dialogues, no equipment, no factions, no holdable objects or items to put in your backpack. Hmm. That would mean no capability to get a default bag, but that's not entirely a bad thing. Because um, we actually have to create those as part of the example 
um, scriptable objects anyway. No quests, recipes, we have all the scene nodes, no skills. Uh, yeah, okay, so kind of interested to see what happens. Let's try that out. So we're going to take the engine directory and the example directory. And uh, I don't remember exactly how to do this again. Um, there's like an export. Yeah, there we go. Export package. So let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Honestly, don't know how much of this is actually needed. I know we need all the you like. Um, let's see. I know we need the Uma. I don't think we're actually using Text Mesh Pro anywhere. Um, I'm assuming it'll include dependencies and re-include it if we actually are using it. But um, that could be an incorrect assumption. Sample scenes. Hmm. I guess I can include that for now. Basically, all I want is the engine and example directories. That's pretty much it. Hopefully, it will properly include all its dependencies. Um, sure, so let's export that and um, we can put that in our Unity any RPG builds releases. This will go under 0 0.6 and we'll put it in the artifacts directory. And we will call this any RPG dash engine dash uh, 0.6a. And then it'll give it the Unity package extension there. And let's see what happens. Can we export it? Does it work? Does it do anything? And more importantly, when we import it into a completely empty project, can we just load the example scene and get ourselves into that example menu? Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I'm getting this oddly strange... Oh, hey, look, there's a comment there. Um, hey, uh, Kushal, um, if you... I can't tell, it's not tell, showing me exactly how many viewers. Uh, Kushal, if you're still connected, um, I'm going to be doing uh, playthrough of all the recent content that I added uh, very soon um, and that'll be basically everything that's been added since uh, 0 0.3 alpha uh, and I'm going to be releasing this uh, 0 0.6 uh, version as well here pretty quickly. Uh, looks like we have a unity package this is great um, so let's uh, let's open we need to create a new project, basically. Um, so let's open up our Unity Hub. We're going to create a new project, a uh, 3D project. Looks OK. We are going to call this one um, the NERPG Engine import test. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. 
And yes, you absolutely can have two copies of Unity running on your machine if you have enough RAM. I've actually had like three copies of Unity running on my computer and I only have 16 gigs of RAM, so that's actually not too bad. Just gonna skip that for now. Okay, awesome. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to go to assets and we want to import the Unity package here. And I've honestly never done this before. This is my first time ever exporting and importing the NERPG engine. So this will be a little bit of an adventure. Uh, I don't know what we're going to get and if it's going to work. But if it does, that would be really cool. I honestly, I don't know how long this takes really either. It's a 30 megabyte package. Um, it's, it's all the standard asset stuff in here that's taking forever to compile. Okay. It's not even really anything in the game, I don't think. Okay, cool, yeah, there's our prefabs. Okay, let's see what we got here. Mm. Uh, interesting. So basically, um, it looks like the whole select dependencies thing um, doesn't actually work properly. Uh, because basically, let's see here. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a select dependencies button actually did anything at all. Because um, really the only thing that got imported was exactly the stuff I clicked. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what is the point of a select dependency button that does not actually select dependencies. Um, but... Yeah, okay. Um, our character controller actually relies on another controller called the, the super character controller, the super state machine. And that super state machine um, is located in a set of directories, basically in the import directories. So if we go back to our other uh, open directory here, I'm kind of interested, like, why, why didn't that thing properly include the right dependencies? Yeah, see this makes no sense. We don't we don't have the eagle 
anywhere in this example directory or linked anywhere from it. So I'm not sure why it's trying to import that. Um, it's also really not clear exactly how this works. Uh, so if I, let's see, if I have the engine and the examples, right, and then let's um, let's uncheck text mess pro here and uncheck include dependencies. So let's check it again and see what happens. doesn't make sense that we would try to import all these scripts. I really don't understand that because it's not like, like we're not referencing this animation test script from anywhere and there are no prefabs anywhere in our example dependencies. That use this. That's like really messed up that it's trying to include that stuff. Um, Although, like, if you look at it, let's see, can we expand this window here? We can, good. Hmm. I mean, it's trying to include literally every single thing. I don't think, like, it's not including anything here. Hmm. Okay, I guess um, maybe I need to go read up on the Unity manual um, because like this UI just doesn't seem very intuitive right now and it's kind of hard to figure out exactly why include dependencies and including a whole pile of stuff that is not actually dependencies. Um, this stuff has nothing to do with our example scene is just literally just trying to load every th single thing we've imported. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm, uh, I'm going to go offline. I'm going to do a little bit of research on how this include dependencies thing is actually supposed to work and whether maybe it's just bugged or broken or just uh, works in a way I don't understand. And I will figure out how to get a proper Unity package with only uh, exactly the stuff we need exported. So uh, thanks for joining, and I hope to see you soon. I will hopefully be able to finish up the creation of the prefabs in the next episode and then get an actual Unity package out so people can start making their own games with this system. All right, uh, take care. See you guys later.